After the events of the first fight, how optimistic are you for Chalembe in the rematch? I mean, uh, I'm very optimistic. I mean, I just don't see Baloo uh, beating him. I mean, uh, last fight, you know, Isaac got the flu a couple of days before. You know, my main concern was him being able to go to 12 rounds, being sick. I mean, but, you know, he made adjustments in the fight and he pulled it out. So now, you know, we got to stay healthy for the next couple of days. <laughs> we still got a few more days left. You know, we keep him indoors and away from everything and everybody. And um, we'll be fine Saturday night. How did you see the first fight? Because Tony went on television over here afterwards and he was saying that you told him that you thought he'd won the fight. Was that, is that the case? No, that's not the case at all. We was in the ring talking. It was loud. And maybe he did ask me a question. Did he win? You know what I mean, but I couldn't hear what he was saying to me. So who knows what he asked? I'll never know what he asked. He didn't know what he asked me. I'll never know. You know what I mean? But I, I told him after the fight, though, I said I was happy with the draw. You know what I mean? With the draw, I was happy that we got the draw. I mean, being in this hometown, getting the draw, you know, we, we, that puts us up one. Do you think, I mean, the, the, the last one was a draw. To me, it seemed like a fair result. To a lot of people, it seemed like a fair result. Do you think, do you think that Chilembe's increased fitness will, will be enough to, to take him take him to the finishing line in, in, in pole position? I don't think it has to do with fitness. I think that if he's healthy, he can start a little faster. You know, he gave away the first couple of rounds. You know what I mean? He was playing to the crowd. You know what I mean? One round I had to go grab him and bring him back to the corner because he, you know, his mind wasn't on fighting. His mind was on trying to show Tony that the crowd wasn't going to get to him, which I'm not with that BS. You know, we're here to do a job. And then after that, he snapped out of it. But by then, we already gave up three rounds. You know I mean, so now we had to fight an uphill battle. So, you know, I mean, it is what it is. We're back here and we're ready. So, you know, we just see what happens Saturday night. I was, when I was growing up, you were one of the best fighters around. Um, how, does, how does this compare? How does your new role in boxing compare to, to those days where you're ruling the world as a fighter? I mean, today, you know, I mean, I love, I love being a trainer. I mean, I, I think it's great. You know, I mean, I love, you know, teaching guys. I consider myself more of a teacher because anybody can train. You know, I believe in teaching. But uh, I just think that, uh, you know, I enjoy it and I love it. And uh, But it's a big difference. Fighters today are nothing like the fighters when I was fighting. And you know, fighters today, I mean, to be honest, no disrespect to them. They can't touch us, man. Yeah. <laughs> Are you working with, you're still working with Matthew, Matthew Macklin. Yeah. How do you, how do you, you bit because Kennedy, Kennedy Klovkin comes in with a massive reputation, doesn't he? Um, how are you going to combat that? Well, we start training when I get back. You know, I'm thinking about that while I'm here now. You know what I mean? And everyone's asking me, why are you so quiet? You know what I mean? Because I, I never seen Golovkin fight, yeah. and everyone's saying you guys are in trouble. You guys are this. You guys are that. This guy can hit. He can do this. He can do that. I'm like, yeah, but can he take a punch? Can he deal with adversity? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know, we got to have a, a couple of battle plans for him. I haven't watched him yet. I'll watch him this weekend when I get home. And uh, after I study him a little bit, you know, me and Matthew get together on Monday and get to work. Okay, brilliant. One last question. What the majority of people here to see this weekend is, is the Cole Froch, Mikel Kessler rematch. If you were a betting man, where would you, where would you lay your money? I put my money on the guy with the boxing gloves on. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fight that I, 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 you wouldn't bet, I wouldn't bet on that. Yeah. Of course, you know, I mean, they both are very good fighters. You know, Frotch, you know, he's just got that unpredictable style. You know what I mean? And, you know, it seems like he gets stronger as the fight goes on. I mean, so it's going to be a, a, a great night of boxing. And, and I think that it's fights like this that boxing needs where the best are fighting the best. You know I mean, no, no, you know, when you get fights that don't even make sense, you know what I mean, being made and, and televised, you know, it hurts fights like this because this here is a fight that, that uh, the fans will enjoy, whether you're on TV, whether you're here, you're going to have a good